Welcome to the full button tutorial of the 2023 Toyota RAV4 Hybrid SE. In this video, we're going to cover all the buttons on the inside of the car, and then we're going to work our way from left to right and finish up with the screen. If you have any questions after video, please sure to leave them down in the comments. But with that being said, let's begin. Starting on the door. All four windows on all the RAV4s now are auto down, auto up. So with a hard push and release on any of these window buttons, they will go down hands free. And with a quick pull and release, they will go up hands free as well. In front of those buttons, there are a couple other buttons here. The one on the left will actually lock the windows. And then these two buttons that you're lock and unlock for the door. You'll also see two little nubbies on the lock. That's gonna be the same as on your key fob. So instead of having to look, you can just feel for the little nubs and you know you have the most important button here, the lock button to keep yourself safe. And the unlock is gonna be the one without the nubs. In front of that, we have the mirror adjustment button. So if I push the L, I can toggle the left mirror on the left door. If I push it all the way to the R, I can toggle the right mirror. However, if I push it in the middle, so halfway, it goes to a neutral position so that if I accidentally hit this, it doesn't do anything. Another fact many Toyota people are not aware of until they're told is that the door lock here is locked, now it's unlocked. When it's locked, you can bypass it by simply pulling on the handle. It will not do this on the back doors, which is normal because that's an extra protective mechanism to protect children. Below the dashboard, we have the buttons for the driver's seat adjustment. By moving this forward or back, I can put the seat forward or back sliding, or I can raise the seat up or lower the seat like this. I can also give it a little bit of a twist motion to twist that cushion to sit more back or forward. This lever here is gonna recline the seat, so I can recline forward or back the seat here. And there's a two-way lumbar support, so it's not four-way up and down, but two-way forward and back to make the cushion come out more or less for the lumbar support. The floor mats have two little dials here that lock them into the floor. So you'll see the arrows are all lined up. One, two, three, four. That means your floor mat is locked. If you quarter turn it, your floor mat is unlocked. So you just wanna make sure that if you take these floor mats out, you check that they're locked so that they don't accidentally slide underneath your brake pedal. Also below the dash, we have the button here for the electronic release on the locking gas cap, which is on the driver's side. Inside of that is a lever, which will release the hood latch. If we move on to the steering wheel stock, there's a pull down lever that we simply pull down and this will allow us to lower and raise the steering wheel or telescope it forward and back. And once you find the perfect position for you, just give it a little bit of muscle and it's locked back into place. Onto the dashboard. Starting from left to right, there's a button here that's actually more of a dial. That's a picture of a speedometer with a light bulb. This button controls the brightness to the speedometer. So it has a clicked in locked position where it'll stay at its brightest, but you can dim it down and this will dim down your gauges and it'll also dim down how bright your interior buttons are, which should light up a nice, like a nice blue color, like a sky blue color. This button here activates the automatic high beams. So when you put the headlights into the auto position, which is right here on the stock, you can activate the automatic high beams. The button next to that is for RAV4s that have the weather package. This activates your heated wiper blades. So elements in the bottom of the windshield will basically become hot and melt the ice off of the rubber blades that are inserted into the wiper blades for the car. Next to that, heated steering wheel. Now this button's unique because it's going to click in and it's going to stay active. So if you have the remote starter, you can leave this on the night before and this will be nice and toasty on the steering wheel. Lastly, on the left side of the dash is the button for the power hatchback. You'd push and hold for a second and a half until you hear a beep and then you can let go and the hatchback will open up all the way. If for some reason you need to stop it, you can push it real quick and you'll hear an additional beep, which will be a shorter beep. But to close it, you push and hold for about a second and a half and you'll hear the longer beep signifying you can let go and it's now starting to close. Two of the four vents, so the outside ones, not the middle ones, the two outside vents have these wheels on the side. These wheels allow you to slow down the amount of ventilation that comes out, so you can actually close the vent completely. The middle vents, if you didn't want ventilation, you have to point them away from you. The center console is very simple. There's one button here that's easy to get to. You push it in, and this comes right up. 
Inside the center console, there aren't any buttons, but you have two USB chargers right on the inside wall. To close, you just give it a gentle push and click. There are some buttons by the shifter that alter the way the car drives and the way it brakes. So, starting with the shifter. It's a very simple linear shifter. With an overhand grip, you push the brake and this button goes up and you can put it right down into drive. Or reverse or neutral. When you're in drive, you can shift the shifter over to the left and you can go into shift mode. You can toggle the gears forward for up and backwards for low. You'll see that on the screen over here. On the bottom of the MID, you'll see right there that I'm in drive, I'm in park, reverse, neutral, a rare scenario, or back to drive. So you don't really need to look down at the shifter. When I shift the shifter to the left, and I go forward, that shows you the gears. Back to drive, back to park. I don't have to look down, it's right there for me. The P button with the red light is the parking brake. So that's another thing that will interact with the MID screen we just looked at. You'll see on the MID, right to the bottom here, well, right outside the MID, it says park. That means the parking brake is active. Now, when I take it out of park, you're gonna see that light goes away and the parking brake automatically releases, but when I put it in park, it automatically reapplies. You'll also notice that lever here will no longer be lit up, but when I park it, it lights back up. The reason they give you this little thing here is so that if you don't like it being automatic, you can turn it off, and so that when the braking system is being worked on, the technicians can permanently turn it off to access the brakes without it turning itself on on accident. The button next to that says hold. That's a brake hold feature that you have to be buckled up for. So I'm gonna go ahead and buckle up. And when I push that button, on the top right of the MID, you're gonna see hold in green. When I take it out of park and I'm driving, it's gonna say hold in gold right over here. It's only gonna say in gold when the system is actually being used. So the green one means it's on, the gold one means it's being used. So when you see the gold, that means I can be in drive, but I can take my foot off of the brake and rest my feet while being in drive, and the car doesn't go anywhere. Now if I give it a little bit of gas, just a little bit, you'll see that gold one disappears. And now the car moves forward a little bit. Then when I come to a stop, the gold pops up and I can take my foot off the brake. Super convenient for when you're in busy traffic or the drive through but this only works in drive. So if I go into reverse, the brake hold will never work. Now the reason being, is that it doesn't make sense for it to work in reverse because then you have to remember if you're in drive or reverse. And statistically, there would be a chance that you would think you're in drive when you're not and you give it a bunch of gas to go and you just slam into whatever's behind you. So that's why it will only work when you're in drive. The RAV4 Hybrid SE also has a trail mode. And when you hit trail mode, your speedometer on the MID, let me just zoom in a little for you, is gonna have some rocky designs on the bottom. And the outer rim of the speedometer is gonna turn like a grayish purpley rock color. What that's going to do is it's kind of alter the way your all-wheel drive system works so that you can perform a little bit better on some gravel trails. Below that, we have the wheel and button for the drive modes, something you're going to use a little bit more often. So the speedometer will be white most of the time when you're in normal mode. But with a simple turn clockwise, you'll go to sport mode. So you just turn it and release, the speedometer turns red. If I do counterclockwise, green for eco mode. And if I push the button down, it's gonna go back to normal mode and it's just gonna say, it's just gonna be white. Now, if we zoom in a little bit, you'll also see it says sport mode over here. So if the red wasn't obvious and the red shadow here, it will tell you sport mode. Counterclockwise for eco, it's all gonna be green. So they make it pretty simple and obvious for you to tell what mode you're in, but notice normal mode doesn't say normal. You can change these drive modes when you're driving, when you're going fast, when you're going slow, uphill, downhill, whenever you want. If you're parked, change it whenever you need it. There's no necessary time to do either one, and it just changes the personality of the car. Eco mode depowers you for more gas mileage. Sport mode 
powers you up with a little bit less gas mileage, and normal's a blend. And the last button by the shifter, EV mode. So if the hybrid battery has regenerated past 70%, which by the way, it's totally normal for the hybrid battery to go all the way down and all the way up. But when it's over that percentage, you can hit EV mode, which it won't let me do right now. But when you do EV mode, it'll actually have the car favor keeping the engine off at lower speeds. And since we're talking about EV mode, on the top left here of the MID, you see the little EV car. That's a green symbol that's gonna go on and off all the time. An easy way to remember that is the EV will show when the car is an electric vehicle, which means it's telling you at a glance the engine is off. When the engine turns on, which is normal to happen randomly, the EV badge will go away. So the whole purpose of this little guy here is just to let you know at a quick glance, is my engine on or is it off? Or am I an EV at this moment or am I not? And when the battery has regenerated to that percentage, which we can take a look right here, yeah, it's just under half. So when that hybrid battery has regenerated itself, either through the engine or the brakes, past 70%, I can now choose to go into EV mode for as long as it can at the low speeds. In front of the shifter, there are a couple different charging slash plug-in options. We have the 12 volt old school and a regular USB. It's not the fast charging USB, but you gotta give people options. Moving on up to the climate control. So for the climate control, I would like to start on the bottom and then get to the main area. So underneath the climate control, we have the button to turn off the traction control. So that'll stop the system that breaks the wheels when they're losing traction to regain your traction. But you might ask, why would I want to turn this off? Well, if you want to allow for a little bit of wheel slip, say you're on a gravel trail or you're driving through very, very thick snow or you parked and you can't pull out of the snow for some reason, turn off your traction control and it will allow for full power to the wheels no matter what, which can sometimes help you dig through whatever you're trying to get through. Your driving skill, and conditions will vary so you have to do some reading and determine when it would actually be necessary if ever but when the car is turned off and turned back on it will default to turning the system back on which is nice because the the system that this turns off the vehicle stability control and the traction control they save lives so you might never even have to touch this but more importantly for the RAV4s that have the weather package you have the low for the heated seat off neutral position and high for the driver and for the passenger but back up to the climate control, we have these two big knobs here that are going to change the passenger and driver temps. If you want them to match, you just hit sync and you can then control both sides from your side. The fan levels are right next to the symbol on the screen, which is super convenient. Then the air direction button is right next to the air direction symbol, so you can change the air direction Front and rear defrost are right next to each other, which makes total sense. And then we have a nice button called Eco Heat and Cool. When I put it into Eco, the Eco Heat and Cool will turn on automatically. When I put it into Sport, it will turn off the Eco automatically. But what's nice is I can be in Sport and turn on the Eco Heat and Cool if I want to. And what's great about Eco Heat and Cool is some of the cars have a little bit of drag when you're blasting the AC. This takes away that drag. Now, Yes, the AC might be slightly less freezing, but the reality is when your car's already cool on the inside, do you need it to constantly be freezing? This doesn't include Southern California, Arizona, Texas, and Florida on the scorchers, but for most of the time, if it's just hot out, you can cool the car down and then enter eco heat and cool to save a little bit of gas and to take away some of that drag. Not that there's much, but some people even leave this on all the time and don't really tell the difference. So that's a really nice feature to have to become more efficient. Two more buttons. We have the recirculate button here next to the rear climate cancel button. So you have vents in the back of the RAV4. If you want to kill the vents, just kill them like that. And then say your rear passengers are like, all right, I need a little bit of ventilation. You just turn off the kill switch right there. And the recirculate is super important if you need to filter the air, say you're in a smelly environment, or more importantly, if the AC is on, you want to turn on the recirculate and pair these together so that you're cooling air that's already cold. That's a quick summary of the climate control. And just remember clockwise is gonna be up in temperature, counterclockwise goes down. They still give you the blue and the red, but it's pretty simple, up 
and down like that. Now for the push starter button. Since the car is on, I can turn it off just by pushing this once and the needles all go down, everything gets black and dark, and it will give you a quick summary of the drive that you took. Now, if I push the button without pushing the brake, so no foot in the brake, it'll turn on just the radio. If I push it again without pushing the brake, it's gonna turn on the climate control and the MID. And then you have a bunch of dummy lights basically just showing you the systems are working, but you'll notice the drive needle is in the off position, so the car is not actually on. I have to push the brake and then give the push, the push button starter a quick push. And then I know the car is on in two different ways. It says ready, and the driving needle is removed from the off position. Those are the two ways I can really tell the car is actually on, because you won't always hear the engine. Sometimes the engine is going to be off and you're not going to hear anything, and you're wondering, well, can I drive the car? Well, this is how you tell. It says ready or the needles off of the off position. Above the climate control, we have the button for the hazards. In case you're pulled over with an emergency or you need to use that for any reason, they're right there. The button does not light up, but that's gonna activate your hazard slash flashers. Let's move our way up to the overhead features. So this RAV4 does not have the auto dimming rear view mirror. It's a simple flipper. For vehicles that have Toyota's automatically dimming rear view mirror, you'll have a button here to turn that on and off. And usually you'll have garage syncing buttons on the left, but this does not have that. It's a simple, good old reliable Toyota mirror. But a couple other things up top, storage for the driving slash sunglasses, the open and close for the moonroof, and the up and down for the moonroof. The moonroof will actually slide into the ceiling, not up and over the top. So with a quick push and hold, It'll stop at the most noise resistant spot, but there is a little extra room. And then a quick push and hold and then release to close it. The up and down button has a little symbol of what it does here. It ventilates it up and down. So I just, I have to hold that one. And I can custom tune it, which is really nice. But just don't forget to close that. And then there's my sliding shade. In the middle of those, I have a blocker so I don't accidentally hit the Toyota Safety Connect button which you get a trial of when you buy a new Toyota, which has been extended, which I'm super jealous of. And once that's active by downloading the Toyota app, you would just push that button if you have an emergency or if the airbags go off, they're gonna to talk to you through the speakers anyway. So that's great. And then in front of those, I have the individual buttons for the new upgraded LED lights. Yes, that's new for the RAV4, believe it or not. And the door button, which means these will come on when the door is opened. This button I like to call the sun button because by pushing this, no matter what I'm doing, it'll turn on all the interior lights if somebody needs to see what they dropped. And just real quick, moving on to the sun visors, there's a quick slide out and then a sliding door for the mirror. Now let's finish up with the screens. We're gonna do the MID first and then we're gonna work our way to the infotainment and that's gonna wrap up the video. Ah, quick, before we do the screens, I forgot the steering wheel. Onto the steering wheel. You have the two main stocks. Start with those. We have the off position. Then auto, which will activate the auto high beams. When the auto high beams are on, you can bypass them like this. Or go back. Parking lights, and then regular lights if you want to ride with all the lights on all the time. But we'll go back to auto. Onto the other stock. We have the rain sensing wipers, which is a part of the weather package. If I click it down once, it goes into the auto feature and I can change the sensitivity. If I move it down again, it'll go to low and then down again, we'll go to high. This area here will operate the rear wiper. So if I click it forward once, it'll go to once in a while. And if I click it forward again, it'll just keep going back and forth. If I pull the stock towards me, it'll wash the front windshield. If I push it away, it'll do the back windshield. On the left of the steering wheel, we have the arrows that go through the different menus, which we will touch in just a moment. Then I have an OK select or back button for that screen. I can pick up and hang up phone calls, change the volume to the music or the phone calls, and make some voice commands. If I'm connected to the wireless Apple CarPlay or the wireless Android Auto, by pushing and holding this, I can actually do Siri or the Google Assistant, which is great. On to the right of the steering wheel, we have the cruise control which has been removed from the stock and put in front of you. Now remember, there are no buttons in the back, so everything's up front. 
So to operate the cruise control, I hit the radar button and it's gonna show that right on the top left here. That's a little picture of a car and a speedometer with an arrow. Now I'm gonna turn that off again. Now watch what happens if I push and hold that button. Just the arrow, not the car. That's the old school cruise control that's not radar cruise control. So that's the old school that'll just keep on trucking. But let's turn it off, give it a quick push. And that's the new innovative Toyota Safety Sense adaptive cruise control, which operates through radar and the camera. So that's gonna sense cars in front of you and it's gonna slow down and speed up based on your settings. So once I hit that, I hit set and it's gonna show on the MID the speed I have it set to and then I can increase the speed, decrease the speed, cancel the system, resume. Of course, by pressing the brake, it turns it off. When in the cruise control, that's adaptive. I can change the sensitivity slash following distance here. And it's gonna show you what that's doing on the screen there. So you can change how sensitive it is. And also the lane departure alert is right under that. So lane departure alert, part of Toyota Safety Sense, will beep when you're going out of your lane and actually steer you back in the lane. A new part of this system is lane trace assist. So when you're in cruise control and you're using the lane departure alert, trains, tr lane trace assist activates. And the RAV4 will actually work on staying in the center of the lane. Below that, just some simple music buttons here. We have mode, which will change between AM, FM, and Bluetooth. And then we have the seek and track for the songs. So that's the steering wheel, but like I promised, let's move on to the screens. We'll do the MID and then the infotainment. On to the MID slash speedometer cluster. So we have the basic readout here for the drive needle. So it'll kind of show you when it's charging itself, when you're driving economically, and when you're driving with more power. On the right, we have the fuel gauge, very easy to read. There's a little arrow there to show you and remind you that the locking gas cap is on the driver's side and then the engine temperature. Now the MID is the screen in the middle that stands for multi-information display. This is the screen that's gonna show you very useful information that you're gonna look at most of the time when you're driving. So we have the button there for the radar system, which I'm gonna turn off for the cruise control. The EV badge that we talked about, just letting us know that the car is actually an EV right now and the engine's off but we know the car is on because it says ready. It tells us the time on the top right, what gear we're in down below, the outside temp and the odometer. Now, say you wanted to change the odometer or the trip, there's a little stock right here. So by giving that a quick push, I can clear my trips by holding, push to go to my other trip, and then back onto the odometer right there. Now, some of the settings to change, you have to hold the okay button on the steering wheel on the left side there, but we'll get into that in just a moment. BSM means the blind spot monitor is active. On the side mirrors, there are little orange lights to let you know when somebody's in your blind spot. Now, using my buttons for left and right and up and down, I'm gonna navigate these menus. And then I'm gonna use the OK button to select them and the back button to go back. So let's begin. We'll start with the very left menu there, as you can see on the bottom, the leaf menu. The first page, which we know it's the first of three, there's little dots there. The first page just gives us our distance to empty, our average miles per gallon, which like I said before, this is a brand new car, so it's not gonna calculate perfectly. It hasn't been driven yet. I have an eco score, which after a few drives, it'll really start giving you some nice scores so you can try to beat your scores. And then I have my EV driving ratio. So it's gonna show you what percentage of this drive was driven actually as an EV. Very interesting. It'll go way up if you're driving at lower speeds. If I push down again, it goes back to the top. Now over to the right, I'm gonna go on to the navigation page. So if I'm using navigation, it's gonna show me some of the stuff there, but it's just gonna give me a quick readout of some of my basic systems, which would be used when I'm navigating, like my automatic cruise control is off and my lane departure slash lane trace assist is currently off. But that wakes up a little bit more when you're using your navigation. The music menu is pretty simple. It's gonna show me what song an artist is playing. So if the screen on this side is taken up by something and I want a quick view of what music is playing, it'll show me. On to the right, I have I for information. Let's, so let's go to the top. We have four pages now. Trip total distance and total trip time. One of my favorite things, especially when traveling, you can see how far you've driven and how much time it took. If I go down again, this is a quick abbreviated view of a menu we're gonna see on the main infotainment screen. This is basically showing you the overall hybrid system. So you have the battery charged just under 50% and 
and you don't see any arrows right now because the engine is not powering the battery, the battery is not powering the wheels, it's just kind of chilling on the hybrid battery acting like an electric vehicle. But you'll see arrows telling you where the energy flow is going on this car. If I go down again, I have the individual tire pressure readouts. They're pretty accurate, but I would still check with an actual tool once a month. The all-wheel drive monitor, so this is going to show you how much power each of the four wheels is getting, which is great to see if you're ever curious. And then back to the top. Now over to the right, I'm going to the settings menu. This is a unique menu that will give you lots of advanced settings for your safety sense systems and some other things. So starting with the top, lane trace assist. That's the feature that will keep you in the middle of your lane when it's turned on and you're in cruise control. If I push and hold this OK button, I can turn the lane center on and off. I can change the sensitivity. I can turn on and off the sway warning, which will alert me if it thinks I'm driving tired. I can change the sway sensitivity and, and pretty much alter these. Now using the back button on the steering wheel, I can go down to the pre-collision system. That's another part of Toyota Safety Sense which activates through the camera in the windshield and the monitor behind the emblem, your radar device there. By pushing and holding OK, I can change the sensitivity or turn that on or off. Back button, down to blind spot monitor. That's just a simple on or off. Now say you wanted to test your bulbs on the mirrors, I could turn this off and then I would go look at the mirror and turn it on and you can see that the bulb is working. So you can do a quick bulb check if you want, which is nice. Rear cross traffic alert, which is part of your blind spot monitoring system. This feature will beep when you're in reverse and it senses movement. So if there's people walking or cars driving, it's going to go beep, 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 and it's going to let you know what it senses on the infotainment screen. Do not confuse this with parking sonar, which some people call parking assist. Rear cross traffic only senses movement. Parking assist actually beeps as you get closer to stationary objects. This is not that. This only lets you know when there's somebody moving behind you. Road sign assist. This is gonna display some of the road signs while you're driving right on the MID. It's very convenient for speedometer signs. It'll even show you stop and yield signs. Very cool, especially if you're in an area where you didn't realize there was a sign there. It's gonna remind you that there was a sign. Moving down to vehicle settings. If I push and hold the okay button, this is where I can adjust that height adjustable power hatchback. So by selecting this, I can change the opening adjustment. Whole bunch of different settings there, but I'm gonna leave it on five and go back. I can even change the volume to the beep. Now I'm gonna go back. The tire pressure wear system, I can reset it over here. I can set the pressure, change the wheels. That's more for the technicians when rotating the tires. The rear seat reminder. So when you turn the car off, it's gonna remind you to check the rear seats for children, animals, etc. If you don't like that, you can turn it off. Scheduled maintenance you can reset. That's more for the technicians. And that's pretty much it there. Now let's go back. One more. We have the speedo cluster settings. Push and hold OK. I can change the language, the units, the meter type. So check this out. I can do analog or digital. That changes the whole look. Pretty cool, right? I personally like the analog. So I'm going to leave that on analog because I love that huge speedometer. The EV indicator, if I don't like that and it stresses me out, I can turn that off if I don't care. And then I can even change some of the things that that leaf menu show, the music menu I can alter, the vehicle information display contents, I can change that stuff. The drive info type, trip or total, I can really start getting advanced customizations on these different menus here. Most people like to leave them at the stock settings. But yes, for the very techie people or particular people, you can really edit everything. And then moving down to pop-up display. See this stuff? I can change the pop-up display here and what it's showing. I can even turn the MID off. Or I can just put it all back to default if I made a mistake. Moving on to the last menu, the warning menu. That's going to turn orange and stay orange if there's a warning. So say there's low tire pressure or maintenance is coming due soon or you hit something and your safety sense sensors are out of whack and need to be calibrated. It's going to stay lit up orange to remind you in case you just can't get to service immediately. It's going to remind you so you never forget. And that summarizes the MID. Let's move on to the main screen, the infotainment screen.
The infotainment screen. It used to have four buttons on each side. Now it's just a big bezel, which is nice because you can rest your hands on while you aim. If you do this, it's going to be a little complicated. I find resting your hand here and aiming like this is a lot easier, just from personal experience. I'm not connected to Apple CarPlay or Android Auto, and I don't want to because the customer that bought this will get confused when they see the two different profiles. So if you really need to see what the CarPlay looks like, please refer to my Highlander video or my Tundra video. But the CarPlay is just gonna look like whatever your phone looks like. It's gonna show the phone apps right on the screen. So we're gonna take this time to keep it as concise as possible since this video and tutorial is already kinda long and just go over the Toyota interface because you're already used to what your phone looks like, but you're not used to what this interface looks like if you're new to the car. So we have the power button for the audio, it turns on and off, and the volume. Of course, like I said before, you have the volume to the audio on the steering wheel as well. Now I'm gonna hit English here, and I'm gonna cancel the setup. And now I have access to the Toyota interface. You will also have access to the same as X screen if you're in CarPlay or Android Auto. The only difference is when you're connected to CarPlay or Android Auto, it's gonna show you the little CarPlay symbol right over here. In fact, I'm gonna get myself connected to the CarPlay real quick without creating an account, just because I know some of you are really gonna to wanna to see it. So hold on one sec. And we're connected. So now you see the little CarPlay symbol. If you had Android Auto, you'll see the little A. So we will begin with the Toyota interface. So this is what the Toyota interface looks like. You can tell it's the Toyota interface slash software, whatever you want to call it, because it has this very Toyota car look. If you were on the CarPlay or Android Auto, it's going to look just like your phone. So you'll, do, you'll be able to tell where you are just based on the style. So just to show you, when I hit the CarPlay symbol, see how it looks just like a cell phone? Now to get back to the Toyota interface, I just hit the Toyota app. See the style change? So you'll always know where you are just based on the style of things. So back to the CarPlay. Like I said, all compatible apps will show right over here. You can use your Apple Maps, you can use your Waze, Google Maps, whatever you're into. On the left-hand side, it will display the three most recently used apps. And then on the bottom here, that's a symbol of the apps. So this will get you back to your main apps area, and that's gonna be the home screen. So it's gonna split up information, show you calendar, a couple other things, your navigation. But say you wanna get back to the Toyota interface and you were playing your music, or you were in your settings, right? What you have to do is hit the little app symbol and just go to Toyota. Boom. Now you're in the Toyota interface and now you can change some of the settings, which is where we're going to spend most of our time. So starting with this. This is going to be the Toyota Drive Connect. That's going to be a basically a subscription through the cloud for Toyota's navigation system. Some people have signed up for it and they're very happy with it. I would say this, most people are using your connected CarPlay or Android Auto, but give it a shot. You might fall in love with it because it is a whole different style, especially my Tundra owners. If you're a Tundra owner watching this video, say that you're just getting this as a backup car or like a gas saver, and you have a Tundra with that 14 inch screen, consider this because it looks amazing on the Tundra screen. Back to that, we have the music. So this is just kind of showing you what's playing on Bluetooth currently, been listening to some lo-fi stuff. But if you hit the music symbol, it'll go here and you can go to sources. And then that's where you can change Apple Music, Amazon Music, etc. Now, if I go to sources and I hit radio, by hitting radio, you'll see the different stations here played, favorites. You can tune the radio if you're on FM or AM. You can use the Sirius radio. Yeah. News from CNN. Which I'm not going to play so we don't have any copyright issues. Radio and more but it's all gonna to be touchscreen. Now, something people are not gonna be used to at first, which you may not be used to is, for the Sirius radio, you have to kind of navigate through your genre first, and then you can save it on your favorites. There are recommendations. It used to be tuned, so you could go in numerical order, like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, blah, 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 all the way through. It's a little bit different now. It wants you to go through genres and stuff like that. So it might even be frustrating at first, but just please take my word you will get used to it and it actually becomes very convenient it's just a, a slight change that you have to get used to i was the one that really liked to tune you know nine 90s on nine and then this and that and then you know in the 50s blah 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 but it's nice that you can go to a genre and you can change everything just by tapping on a, a symbol now when you hit the phone symbol if you're connected to bluetooth which i just disconnected 
it's going to show you your contacts and stuff like that. Now these two symbols, you're going to hit select a little bit more. So when you hit the car symbol, you have your trip information. This will just give you a quick, you know, summary of what's going on with the trip. Let me go back. Energy flow. That's a bigger version of that diagram that I showed you over here. So that's a bigger version of that. Really cool. So you see different arrows and colors to show you where the energy is going and how the car is powering itself. And then vehicle alert, which I'm not too sure what would be in here, to be honest with you, because I didn't see this on my last video. I will have to get back to you on this one, guys. But onto the settings. Personal info. So when you connect it through the app, it's going to show you your account and everything like that. You can connect to a Bluetooth device here, which you'll do on your initial startup. But for general, we have our screen beep on and off, date and time change. I can do some keyboard settings, language and units. Really cool. Now back to settings. If I go down to Wi-Fi, I can activate my Wi-Fi subscription. Display is another important one. I can turn the display off if it's a little too bright. Just tap it twice to turn it back on. I can even change the brightness and the contrast, or I can set it to automatic. I can also do that stuff for the camera, which is great. So for people sensitive to bright lights, definitely go to settings and go to display. For sound and media, I can go to sound tuning and I can change the bass, treble, and everything, which you'll want to do. Turn the treble up and the bass up a little bit, leave the mid in the middle, and I find that works great for most Toyota speakers. But I can even put the music a little bit further to the back, to the right, wherever I want it, or I can recenter it, which is great. Onto media, if I don't want cover art, I can turn that off. Vehicle customize. Another menu that I went over in one of my popular videos, you can change how long the lights stay on when you turn them off. If you have daytime runner lights, the auto off timer for the interior lights, for the door control, you can change the door locks. So you can make it so that they stay locked when you put it in park. You can change the way the key fob works as well. And for climate, the auto AC, which most people like, you can turn that off if you didn't like that. If you're in a more of a modest climate. Info and security, nothing crazy here. They do have a privacy lock if you want to lock the screen. Software update you can check for. Usually it has an automatic update. And then apps for the remote connect, you can activate that through there. But typically it's going to activate on its own when you connect to the car. Down here we have some dealer info. So this stuff on the bottom here, these, I really wouldn't be super concerned with. The vehicle customize you're going to enjoy. Voice and search, you can have it, you know, listen to you when you say, hey, Toyota, and it'll it'll basically do what Siri does. In my experience, people are enjoying Siri and Google Assistant more, but say you want to try the Toyota one, try it. You might like it. But yeah, so to summarize all of this in the settings menu, the ones you're really going to use the most are going to be Bluetooth to connect phones, general to change your time, display to turn the screen off for brightness, sound and media to tune, and then just vehicle customized to change your door locks and your light settings. And that's the basics of the infotainment system. And just to remind you, when you're connected, you'll see the car player Android Auto symbol here. Then you can bounce back by hitting the Toyota black emblem right over there. And you can go between the two different softwares. What a tutorial. So that wraps up the tutorial on the 2023 Toyota RAV4 SE Hybrid. I hope you enjoyed it and found it useful. Please give it a like if you liked it and share in the comments if I missed anything you wanted to go over. If this helped you, I would love to know because you know you can always find me in the comments. And if it was useful, please consider subscribing for more Toyota content. I like to review up-to-date vehicles, give you what the changes are, and review all of the buttons. With that said, that wraps it up. I'll see you in the next one. I hope you enjoyed. Peace.